What comes to mind when you think of home? Could be your favorite restaurant surrounded by friends. Maybe your favorite place to get away with family. Your house surrounded by your favorite people. Or the football field. This, this is my home. When it comes time for you to find yours, the only team I trust is Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, just open with uh, what a great environment, great game. Um, I would say, uh, you know, to the duties back home in Athens, I know they're together. Um, meant a lot uh, for us to win that game for them. And, um, you know, all the events has meant to our university and such an ambassador of our program and really all of college football. So uh, I know if he was looking down on that one, he would have enjoyed the first half. I don't know that he would have enjoyed the second one, but uh, he and Eric probably had a laugh uh, together about it. And um, he's meant so much to us and just in honor of him and, and their family, uh, it was special. It was a tough time um, for that to happen. But our fans were awesome here. Uh, the environment was good. Uh, we lost momentum in the second half. We faced resiliency, stared it in the eye, and we didn't blink. And I'm really proud of our players. You know, there was a time there where we lost momentum and um, that's happened to us more this year uh, than it did last year and we bounced back. So I was really proud of the players. Questions? Yeah, Coach, talk about just you already did the response offensively after a couple turnovers, 28 and 20, they get back into it for your offense to respond and score right there. What's that mean? Yeah, that was probably the drive of the year so far, right? I mean, they, they answered the, the bell because 28 20, and, you know, we've lost momentum. We've had, I guess, three kickoff returns, it felt like in a row. We weren't getting field position, and uh, Kenny had had the fumble. And, you know, I thought, I thought Kenny McIntosh showed a little something tonight now. When he when he came out after that fumble, and he, he had that eye of the tiger look, and he wanted the ball, and, uh, and he was running the ball hard and physical and getting yards after contact. And it's a lot of credit to the offensive line, but that's a lot of credit to Kenny as well. And that drive that you're referencing was big for us. What you said, Nick Kirby, after he came off the field, you, you went up to Kenny. What would you, what you No, I, I don't think I talked to him after the fumble. I, no, no, after the touchdown. Well, I told him that he's a, he's a bad MFer. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's tough. He's physical. He's, uh, he gets after it, and, and he responded. You know, that, that's what I talk about. You, you've got an opportunity to show resiliency, which is one of our four DNA characteristics, and I promise you, every NFL scout and every George fan watching will remember the way he responded. He, he, he ran the ball with, with, with just vicious attitude, contact-seeking running back. You got uh, Jalen Carter back tonight, and it looked like he played mo mainly on third downs. I saw you talking to him several times when he came off the field. What, how big was that, and how, how did he look, in your opinion? I can tell you how he looked, because yeah. I was trying to watch the back end and make sure our adjustments were there. Um, so we'll watch the tape and evaluate it. It was great that he uh, he fought himself to get back. He rehabbed himself to get back. He wanted to play. He loves this team. It's important to him in a day and age where some kids don't care about the team. He cares about the team, and he wanted to play. And uh, he took on the role we asked him to take on. And, Hopefully he continues to get healthy. Look, we, we, we need him. We're, we're missing, you know, some guys in depth in the front. As we play more snaps, we struggle, and it showed, you know, in the uh, second half there. We saw Nolan come out. Do you have any update? I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, uh, I, I want to say it was separated shoulder. I don't know how severe it is. Um, so we'll find out. I know, I know that Chaz came in and did a really good job. Uh, Beefy did a good job. Robert Bill and, and filled in for him. Uh, Marvin had the flu, so we couldn't get Marvin in there. We had several guys that were sick coming into the game. So, Kirby, I know ideally you want every play to be executed properly, but is there something to be said for this sort of win in terms of your confidence going into a game like you've got next week? Any win. Any win includes confidence. You guys criticize the wins. I'm great at the wins. In the SEC, when you beat Florida, any win. And uh, they're hard to come by. They're tough. They're physical. They're hard fault. Um, I'm proud of where our guys play. Where were you when you found out that Julie passed away? And, and maybe what's a favorite memory that you had with You know, I, I, we just landed in Jacksonville. So we took off and um, uh, wasn't aware of anything. Then the phones you know, started dinging and the text messages started coming through. And uh, Garrett, his son, who I work on staff with, sent me a text and Claw sent me a text. So we knew that it was kind of imminent. And um, I had gotten a visit with him. Uh, a little bit last week and sat down. He was in the training room and we got to talk uh, for a while. And of course, I didn't know that would be the last time, but that's probably my fondest memory because even then he was telling stories about Georgia football and 
he's been around with my family. They've been in the box during these SEC championships and national championships, and my kids have got to be around him. And you know, it's funny because my kids had no idea like who's the old coach, who's this old guy, you know. <laughs> and now they know. They know the history and what all he stood for and what his family did for this university. And uh, I got a lot of respect for him. Curry, did you have any meaningful conversations with him when you were a player here? Um, probably more interaction. Uh, as you know, he was the AD, and he would come in and speak to us once a year. Um, you know, I was close to Mike, and Mike's married into his family there with the Mishads. So I've always uh, been around him. And I, I remember him talking at an LSU football clinic when I was a coach there, and he was the keynote guest speaker. Nick had him come in, and just an incredible job. And just someone so wise and classy, and he's really. A person of the arts, you know, and you don't find that in our profession. And uh, it's really cool and unique, um, just who he is and, and, and how he's treated everybody. What's cool to me is I see all the social media. There's not one person that I look at on social media, from Twitter to Facebook, that doesn't have a picture with him. And they all post the picture with him, and it's their memory of him. And he touched every life in the state, and uh, just did so much for our program. Kirby, you're going to run here. You're going to run here in this series, like. Vince had, like Steve Spurrier had, you won five out of six. Is it, How hard is it to get the kind of momentum to do what Coach Dooley did, to do what Coach Spurrier did in the 90s in this series? Well, it's hard to win any series in the SEC, you know, especially when you're talking about a, a top program in the country. I mean, you, you know, I, I don't look at it as runs. I look at it as each individual year, you know. I mean, I still think we should have won the year we lost here. That's the game that probably haunts me the most is that, that we didn't play worth a crap two years ago here, and you wonder why, you know. Um, and you worry about each individual year. You don't worry about runs. And Billy's going to do a, 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 a great job. He already is because he's, he's recruiting hard, and those those guys didn't stop. They didn't, fight. They didn't quit fighting now. They came out in the second half and, uh, and answered the bell. Can you elaborate on, on this season? I mean, last year you had all the guys coming back. It was like you were supposed to win it. This year's team, 15 guys gone to the league, 13 transfers, you're 8 now. Is it a different feeling? Is this journey? Feel? They're all different. I mean, they really are all different. I mean, this team is so different than last year's, and this team continues to work hard and get better. You know, Stetson's playing good. He had some moments tonight, but he also did some really, really good things in that game that maybe the normal eye doesn't see. And uh, if we could take away the, the couple of the decisions, he, he played really well and it allows us to score because we're probably not what we were uh, defensively last year. But we play as a team, we play complimentary football, and, uh, and that's important. You know? But we, we have to keep getting better. Like we're not there. And people want to put us there, but we're not there. What was your reaction to that Brock Bowers TD where he like juggled it and still found a way to I, I immediately thought it was karma for the, the other one, the one that, the one to Darnell. You know, it was just like we, we, we didn't get the Darnell one, but we, we got that one and it bounced back our way. Kirby, how difficult to gain momentum after you lose it in the yeah. third quarter, and especially in a 50-50 environment? It's hard. You start losing it and you're thinking, what can we do? You know, you're looking, you're searching. That's where, as coaches, we got to do a great job with our players. You know, we got a young, true freshman that doesn't get over the top and cover two and gives up a huge play. I mean, just momentum play. And, hey, guess what? He's got to go back out there and play. You know, he's going to have to go play. And you, as a coach, you can't lose him. Because I've seen him get that look in their eye. He bounced back, made some good plays for us, and uh, uh, he's going to be a good player. Kirby, you what happened on that play, Coach, that long touchdown? Yeah, we just didn't play it right. As a coach, do you enjoy that kind of seeing what the, the best kind of come out in players like that when they face adversity? I don't enjoy losing the momentum in a game. I enjoy the fact that we never blinked and the kids were saying the right things on the sideline. You know, there's two things when adversity hits. You fracture or you connect. And uh, our team connected and they reached out to each other and they helped each other. We uh, know what kind of team Tennessee is going to bring in there next week regardless of what they do tonight. They like to throw outside, like to throw deep. But is that, how much of a concern is that based on what you've seen that break down some others? Well, I mean, is it a concern? They, they run the ball really well, guys. I know you don't believe me, but they run the ball really well, which is why they throw the ball outside, because everybody's got people inside. They have a perfect storm. They've got really fast, elite wide out where they quarterback with a really strong arm. You know, if they had a quarterback that they couldn't throw it, you'd say, well, they're one-dimensional. But they have a kind of a perfect storm going for his offense. And when he has that, it's really, really, really hard to stop. They, they go at an elite pace. 
and uh, they do a tremendous job. Kirby, how much do you think y'all were able to affect Anthony Richardson? Y'all maybe didn't get a ton of sacks, but it seems like y'all were harassing him all night and didn't, you know, kept him from uh, ripping off a bunch of huge scrambles. Yeah, I thought we did a good job affecting him. I mean, I thought it's hard to tackle. You can't finish on him, and, and there's really no way to simulate it. We tried to, you know, do drills all week. We're tackling a big back that's like the quarterback, and uh, he, when he gets up next to you, he's a big man, and uh, he's a hell of a football player, and I think he's gotten a lot better. I know your thoughts on, on the recruiting aspect of the game down here, but once the whistle goes off, do you enjoy playing this game in Jacksonville? You know, I enjoy all games. I enjoy all games. I do. That's why I coach. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about where it is, who it is. It's nothing about that. It's about rivalries. It's about the SEC. It's the pageantry. It's the emotion back and forth. I mean, it's incredible. You mentioned earlier about getting better every step of the way. How have you seen Brock Bowers do that with a career high? I think 154 receiving yards today. Well, yeah, I think he, I mean, he gets opportunities, right? So he got touches, he got opportunities, he made the most of them. He makes a lot of contested catches. I mean, that catch on fourth down, you know, I, I don't think that was going to be a first down. I think it was going to be fourth and two, and we still got to convert. Well, it didn't matter because he went and got the ball. And uh, he makes a lot of plays on the ball. So he, 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 he is uh, the ultimate uh, competitive excellence guy. We talk, Harvey talks about it all the time. Competitive excellence is when it's 50-50 or when you got to go make a play, can you make it? And we've seen him do it over and over again. We hadn't seen a lot of Kenny between the tackles until this game. Obviously, like you said, he had the eye of the tiger. Can you just talk about <laughs> handing it to the senior there? Y'all kill me with this between the tackles thing. <laughs> like, there's no like run that says between the tackles. There's an inside zone, there's an outside zone, there's counter, there's all these different plays. They hit different places based on what the defense does. So, I, Kenny ran the ball really, really hard and did a good job. We ran it in between the tackles against Auburn. You know, we ran it in between the tackles against other people. Sometimes we move them, sometimes we don't. Sometimes they slant, sometimes they don't. Uh, but I thought when he came back after the fumble, he came back with a vengeance. And you watch the way he ran the ball. It was like, man, that dude's running possessed. And he wanted it. And that's what – it reminded me of Nick and Sony of the, the, the championship game, the game against Oklahoma where he was like, oh, man, give me the ball back, coach. I messed it up. And he ran pissed off. And that's what, uh, that's what Kenny did. Can you talk about O-line depth? Seemed like y'all needed it out there today, especially with the uh, trust and Mims gone. Yeah, we, we, we were getting dinged up. Warren's shoulder was messing with him. Uh, Truss had a toe, but he, he still played. He played on field goal PAT. Um, so I don't know how severe that is. Uh, Mims knee, but I think he's going to be fine. I mean, it's, uh, it's a slight MCL, not like Jalen's. But again, you don't know the answer to these things until tomorrow or further. Speaking of Jalen, was he comfortable the whole, the whole game? He felt like he was. He told us he felt good in warm ups, felt good. And we tried not to put him in, in a, a pounding situation, but. They pound all the time. I mean, it's third down. We knew that there was a threat. They would run it, you know. But I got, I got to, I got to watch, the, watch the tape because you know I didn't. I don't know if he made any plays, but his snap volume was huge for Nas and Zion on first and second down. How big was he? Had 13, gave up 13 yards on 13 carries to them in the first half. They led the nation. You know, that was yards awesome, carry. but it was just yeah. as bad <laughs> in the second half. I thought we tackled poorly, and I mean, at the half, I don't, I don't know that defensively we had played better in a half than we did that half. And then the drive in the second half, the first one, I don't know if we played this, it, it, we've never played it that bad. Um, it, just, it, it just snowballed on us. Two more questions. What about Dejon Andrews' progress in this game? Tough. Oh, Man, he's patient runner. He, he's yards after contact. Uh, that run he broke out of there was really big for us. I think that was the, wasn't that the one that took it from eight to 15, I guess? I mean, that was a huge run. He was really patient. I don't know if those guys can see him behind him. He's so little. How do you simulate the pace? I'm sorry. How do you simulate the pace this week, Coach? <laughs> Good question. That'll be an age-old question. I think every defensive coordinator across college football is trying to figure that out. And uh, we're all searching. There's no way. I mean, let's be honest. You can, you can two huddle. You can three huddle. You can shotgun huddle. You can go against air. But... Uh, they do it, and they do it really well, um, and it's, it's really hard to defend. Thank you.